Hi, my name is Ash from the Twitch channel Safe Landing, and today's automation blueprint is going to be looking at three different ways of cooling a gas geyser. Anyway, let's get into it. The first build uses Weaselwatch for cooling. The strategy is to use thermally reactive materials and connect a cold body to a hot body. The resulting heat exchange creates water. As a catalyst to the reaction, I've got a wall of gold metal tile, some gold temp shift plates, and also 20 kilos per tile of hydrogen in the coal tank. These will improve the heat exchange, preventing the steam from building up and becoming too much of a problem. Now the main pro to this build is it is a standalone and doesn't use any complexity to work, and once set up will continue as is for the rest of the game. The major con to this though is the amount of wheeze warts you need to build it. As a rule of thumb for this to work forever, I use one wheeze wart per one kilo of steam emitted by the geyser rounded up. This one does 3.7 kilos per second, so four wheeze warts, which is a lot. Not only are wheeze warts a limited quantity on the map, but to get four usually means digging into two coal biomes, and the way the C generator works, that means moving through at least four zones to get that many together. And to make this work in the early game requires some crazy expansion. Still, it's a solid option if you can meet the requirements. My second build uses a heat sink, and in this example, I'm taking as much heat out of the geyser as I can to heat up a body of germy polluted water. As the germy polluted water heats up, it kills the germs, allowing the water to be refined and recycled as clean water. Since my dupes each create 10 kilos of germy polluted water every cycle just by going to the bathroom, you do have a constant source of coolant. And as long as the coolant in the tank stays under 99 degrees, you'll convert all the steam into water. Now the automation is pretty straightforward. I've got a thermo sensor set to be active if the water is above 90 degrees. As the pump pushes the polluted water out of the tank, it'll trigger this pressure sensor, which is set to active if the water pressure in its tile is under 800 kilos. When it's triggered, it will activate this liquid shutoff valve, which will bring in more germy polluted water, cool the tank, and keep the cycle going. Now to avoid the system flicking on and off, I've set up a filter gate here set to 50 seconds, meaning when the gate gets an active signal from the pressure sensor, it will delay sending that active signal to the liquid valve for that set period, giving my pump time to eject 500 kilos of hot polluted water out of the tank before a cooler batch gets brought in. This build can be done fairly early as the resources needed can be sourced from the first swamp biome you push into. The hot polluted water goes to a holding tank to lie fallow for a bit, and from there it'll go to this water sieve which will refine the hot polluted water and kill most of the heat by outputting 40 degree clean water. This technique, by the way, totally invalidates my previous video, Liquid Tepidizer Blueprint for German Water Management, and is a very energy efficient way of dealing with German water. Though if you want to see some sweet interconnected automation system, that vid is still worth a watch. Now my last build uses a combination of both previous builds to deal with a super hot geyser that spits out small quantities of 500 degree hydrogen. Now your cooling technique has got to be on point because 500 degrees will break everything if not properly dealt with. Now my first line of defense is a loop of germy polluted water running through these radiant pipes. Like my cooling loop blueprint using a thermo regulator video, I've got a bridge coming in and a thermo sensor detecting the temperature of the coolant as it goes past it. Anything over 95 degrees gets immediately ejected out through the liquid shutoff valve. For the sensor to function properly, the coolant needs to be in motion, so I put in a bridge here to direct the flow. Because I'm using pre-steel technologies, I want to make sure that my gold gas pump does not hit over 125 degrees or it will break. So I brought in two wheeze warts, providing directed cooling to the pump, and in the temperature overlay, you can see it go from molten to scorching to hot, thanks to the radiant pipes, then warm, temperate to chilled, thanks to the wheeze warts. And the hydrogen coming out is at 30 degrees, which is way cooler than I need it to be, but when dealing with high temp, making sure the system doesn't break first go takes priority, and will save you a lot of headaches later on. Besides, you can now push the cooled hydrogen through some radiant pipes to act as a coolant for something else before setting that heated hydrogen to get killed off, say in a thermo nullifier or hydrogen generator further down the track. This principle of leaching heat from the materials or buildings you want and transferring it to another resource you're setting off to get destroyed or refined comes up again and again in this game and is a really useful way of thinking. And that's it. Three different examples of cooling a gas geyser. I hope this has been informative, and as usual, if you liked the vid, hit a like. Want to see me make more, hit a sub, chat to me in the comments, or hit me up on my Twitch channel, always up for a chat. 
now that the hottest and longest heat wave in Australian recorded history is nearly over, I'll be able to start streaming again on a regular schedule. I hope you learned some stuff that'll help you with your own fantastic creations in Ani. Thanks and bye for now.